Oh, hey everybody, what's up? All right, we got both of us here today. How's everybody doing? Thank you for joining us today. Oh, I did. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us today. And uh, you know, uh, Brandon and Sarah here, we are the Harmonious Duo. Happy to be here again in front of you. And what is it, beautiful Tuesday right, right now? It's a Tuesday. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Tuesday. And so today, we are going to discuss with you, why is it that talking can be costing you money? I know a lot of us in the business for ourselves, we we decided to get into the business so that we could share a message. And in doing so, that kind of entails that you're gonna be talking, right? Yeah, well, and, and that's the funny thing. Like, most people, like, when you go into business, you know, and you read, like, all these books, you go to all these seminars, you talk to all these, like, really successful business people, they tell you, like, you have to be a good salesperson. You need to work on your sales skills. And in order to sell, you have to know how to talk to people, so you have to learn how to talk to people. And so where there's, like, so much emphasis. The key word in that whole thing was talk, not communicate. Yeah. She's right. She said they tell people to talk, not Yeah, yeah. and, like, the whole – um uh, <laughs> I messed you up. You did. I just hope you thought. Um, oh, so uh, the whole focal point that that everyone teaches you to go out and learn is how to talk to people, how to talk to people, how to talk to people. And what we've noticed is that there's so many there's so many times where you end up talking yourself out of a sale, which means if you talk yourself out of a sale, you talk yourself out of income. And if you continue to do it, you talk yourself right out of a business. And I can tell you from personal experience, because there's been many times where Brandon has, you know, he's come back in and I've relayed conversations that I've had with him where I was adamant that like I was going to make a sale and I was so upset. And I'm, you know, so I'm like kind of relaying it to him. And he's like, honey, you should have closed that sale. Like, eight points in that conversation ago, like you just talked yourself right out of that sale. And that was the thing, like I was so focused on talking and getting like all of the benefits and features of what I had to offer these people, you know, in front of them. So they really understood. And like the first sitting. Yeah. So you they know, really like, understood like what was in front of them that I literally talked them out of a sale. <laughs> scared the hell out of people. You know, it's basically what she did. She just, she, you know, and, and it's not just her. This happens to everybody all over the place. And that's one big, that's just one aspect of how, you know, talking can cost you money. We're going to go into a list of those today. And for those of you who are new to the Hangout, before we get into the goods, we want to share a little bit about us so that you could just kind of know where we come from and feel comfortable moving forward. Plus to kind of hear a little bit about, yeah, like we said, where we came from, you know, it wasn't a really pretty place for us not too long ago. And now we're able to, uh, you know, be a main influence to our daughter and make money by creating an income online. So that's something that we are just excited to share with you. And to begin our story, my story started when I was about, well, my entrepreneurial journey started when I was about 20 years old. That's when I got licensed as a realtor and I decided to take things maybe a little more serious in my life. Well, that's what I thought at least. When I got licensed, which was one of the most uh, biggest accomplishments that I've ever done, it got me to realize that I needed to it got me to realize that in order to focus on one thing, you can't have anything else in your life, right? And I didn't know that, what that really meant. So I kept still trying to spread myself so thin with everything that I didn't focus fully on real estate. So in turn, my business failed and it led me back into the restaurant industry. And since me moving out of my house when I was 16 years old, that was really what I had known before I got into real estate. And so that led me back into that. So for a decade then, about four years after I got licensed, I was still in the restaurant world. So I was still serving tables, doing things like that, that didn't really make me happy, even though I told myself that I was extremely happy because I was getting paid every day. I didn't really have to worry about bills, but I didn't have any money. You mind you that, I mean, if you look at a server's, and this is just, uh, I'm speaking from experience, if you're different and you're the anomaly, then God bless you. But <laughs> uh, if you look at a server's typical wages and say they make 80,000 a year, well, I would love to, I would love to know the average savings of that each server, okay? So if you have 80 grand as an average of each server, how much money does servers actually save? We don't save nothing. No. We don't, because we're always constantly looking for that next that next day, because we know that tomorrow we're getting cash. We know that the next day we're gonna get cash. So with the way that we think and our mentality, why would we have to save if there's constant money coming in every day? And so that just really baffled my mind to, to just think about that right now. And so I had that mentality up until I was about 25 when I met this beautiful woman. And so at that moment, when I had realized that I had made quite a big chunk of change in servers, we know we make money. You know, if you're in a good spot and you can make solid money, you can make good money. And so for a decade, mind you, of working for 10 years of working, guess how much money I had saved up? I probably had about 200. No, I don't even think I had money. I'm lying. I don't even think I don't even think I had any money saved up. OK, and now that is just I say that because now now things are different. You know what I mean? And I can actually kind of grin at that. But in those times, 
I didn't realize how much, how damaging that could be. And so when I looked into her eyes and I knew that we had to make, I knew I had to make something different. I knew I had to do something different. The money that I had put away, which was nothing, wasn't going to be able to sustain any kind of emergency if she wanted to get away, if I wanted to get away, if I wanted to make something serious with this relationship. There's no way she was going to respect a man who has zero savings. I mean, at least not, I wouldn't want to be with a woman who respected a man with zero <laughs> savings. That's just plain and simple. So I wouldn't feel deserving of her. And so I had to step up my game. And so I decided to take a habit of mine or a hobby of mine that I had learned uh, being here in Las Vegas that was taught to me by a buddy that was basically my way out. And that was poker. And I just jumped right into it. I dove right in. I did really well for the first few years. And then we ended up having our first child. And <laughs> it just threw my game through a loop. I had priorities that were set in place and they were just rearranged. And so I had to go around uh, basically a new way of doing things. Well, that was when our buddy that introduces this opportunity that um, we're involved with right now, our primary company, um, the, it, it just, he presented it in a way that didn't really make much sense, okay? Which is what a lot of people do when they're new in the industry. You know, they talk about their, their opportunity. They go, hey, you know what? This is what I'm a part of. This is what I'm doing. This is how you can make money from all this. And you're just like, I have no idea what you just said. <laughs> I'm a poker player. What do you mean I can make? I don't know how to work a computer. I don't, I don't get it. I, I probably still have a MySpace account. You know what I mean? Like, that's how bad it was. You know, you didn't, I wasn't hip to anything. I didn't know what was going on. She was still kind of involved with stuff, but she didn't understand the money making. She didn't understand how to build a business. There was none, there was none of that involved. So we were one of those people who got like, uh, who resisted for seven to eight months. It was about seven or eight months that we resisted this information. And then finally, you know, we, we, fell, we fell into two, we fell involved with this and we started seeing things happen within our life that we never thought were really imaginable before that moment. The things he was saying, to, the things that he was saying to us were actually true. And if we would have not wasted seven months, we, we would have gotten back a lot back of our life. And that's just something that we love to share with people because there's a reason why we want you to take action. It's because we've neglected to do that in our life and we know the consequences of that. And so before I go on into the meat and potatoes, I'd love to let Sarah share something about herself, where she began and the journey that she uh, got on. Um, well, for me, mine's a little different. I Just a little bit. A little bit. Um, my, my, I guess my entrepreneurial journey didn't, honestly, didn't even start until I met him. And I think it was maybe, what, at least eight or nine months before, like, it was about eight or nine months when we first started dating that he started asking me because at that point you know we had both quit the service jobs that we were working and i became a nanny to a family here in vegas making like, oh you can tell them 150 dollars a week for three kids <laughs> I, was, three kids. I was there oh five days goodness. a week i was there homeschooling them i went on family vacations with them like i was basically like they were not in America <laughs> anyway <laughs> anyway so um so yeah so that's where I was at and Brandon had been asking me for some time he was like you know I like you love cooking like you love baking you spend like all of your free time watching all of those shows on the Food Network channel and then going into the kitchen and then like doing it so why don't you just build a business because if you do I could be your I could be your guinea pig <laughs> you know <laughs> so he was all excited about that and to be honest with you, when he brought that up to me, I thought he was absolutely crazy because I had never really been a, I'd never really been talked to from a serious standpoint that going into business for myself was something that I could even consider. You know, I come from a background where it was, you know, you go to school, you get your, you graduate from high school, you go to college, you major in a practical, reasonable major that can get you a well-paying job. You go to the job, you just work it and then you retire. That's fun. And you know, of course there's like adventures along the way, I guess. That sounds so exciting. But you know, I, I rebelled against that for such a long time. And you know, in fact, I never went to college because my, well, my excuse was, well, if I don't know what I want to go for, then I'm not going to waste my money. <laughs> and so I just never went. <laughs> and, um, well, yeah, that turned out well. I'm sure that sounds familiar <laughs> to a bunch of you folks watching this too, right? <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, so for Brandon, approaching me, planting that seed that that was something that I could consider, I got really excited. I had no idea what I was doing, but I was really excited. And so I was like, okay, well, I'll just make stuff and then I'll sell it. And then we'll go live this awesome lifestyle. And little did I know that as I started doing this, because I went through the whole process, right? I went through all the legal paperwork to get uh, my business my business name for the baking company that I was going to have. Like I had that registered with the state. I had all of my, um, 
I had filed with the Secretary of State. Like I did the whole shebang. I pretty much had everything except a space to sell. <laughs> and then I realized very soon after working on this for like two and a half years that I was creating another job for myself because I was the only one who was doing any of the marketing. I was the only one building the website. I was the only one baking. I was the only one selling. I was going to be the only one distributing. Like I was doing everything. And I was like, do I like baking that much? <laughs> <laughs> and so I was kind of at a standpoint because one, I didn't really know where to go from that point. I didn't know, I, I had no direction. So I was kind of just stuck. And then I was also contemplating the idea of, do I really want to move forward like that? Because I mean, even though I'd be doing something that I really love, is it enough to where I can spend all of the time away from, you know, our family that I said I wanted to spend with them? Like, is that worth it? And I, I've dabbled with this thought, this process for like months. And yeah, it was interesting. And of course, during this time period, Brandon was, um, you know, playing his poker and this was of course when he had started hitting his dry runs. And so we were hitting, we were hitting moments where, where it was just very stressful for us. And, you know, on the outside looking in, everyone thought we had this like picture perfect life. Oh, Brandon, you're like this super cool poker player who makes tons of money. You've got like this awesome lady who stays home and never nags you about being gone all day long. <laughs> like you guys just have it's it all true. together. And really on the inside, you know, we had our own issues just like every other family, you know, I, I loved being a stay at home mom, but I also, it was really important to me that Brandon got to have as much influence in time with Savannah as I did because growing up, I grew up with a, someone who, he was like my stepfather. I didn't know that for like the first 13 years of being with him, but you know, I, I basically grew up without my dad. And so whenever I had that revelation in my life, I vowed that if I ever did have a family, I wanted I did want the dad, assuming he wanted to be around, <laughs> you know, that I wanted him to be there for his kids too, just as much as I was. That was really important to me. And so, you know, it was a struggle for us because we were at this, we were at this like fork in the road where it was like, okay, like we're not making money with poker the way that we used to, but that's like our income. And we've already made this decision that we weren't going to go fill out job applications because we vowed that we would never break that promise we made to Savannah, which was putting her in daycare. And so we were again at a standstill, like, oh my God, what do we do? Like we need, we, we have a growing family. We need money, right? We need to keep the roof over our head. Like, what do we do? And it was actually at that pivotal point where Jay, where Brandon's friend, I think it was like on the eighth month that he had been trying to pound this into us <laughs> where he finally got through to Brandon. And because he got through <clears throat> to Brandon, I was able to see what they were talking about and I looked at him and I'm like, what is this? And <laughs> why does, why is this magic circle number right here in the middle of the paper say $8,000 in one week? Like, what is that? And so he explained to me what his friend explained to him. Um, you know, we went through this process of, of debating, like, is this a good move for our family? Should we do this? We weighed the pros and cons and we realized that it would, it would be worse off for us, for our family, if we made the decision to not make a change and do something different and give this opportunity a shot, because this opportunity was literally laying out everything that we wanted for our family. It was going to give us the income security that we wanted, right? It was going to be able to provide us with the money that we wanted for the specific type of life we wanted to live. It was going to give us the ability to go and spend time doing things that we wanted to do when we wanted to do them. And it was gonna allow us to keep our promise to our daughter, which was to keep our family intact and keep her out of out of daycare. So for that, that was a win-win for us. And that's why we decided to go along with, with taking advantage of this opportunity. And, you know, of course, one of the things that we've learned is that it's really important that you don't talk yourself out of sales, like I've done so many times. <laughs> and so that's why we wanted to put this hangout together for you guys, because we wanted to share with you why talking can cost you not only money, but it can cost you time and it can cost you a lot more important things like your friends, your family, your colleagues. Like, And we will make that point valid today, okay? Because we're gonna get you to, or ask you to pull out your notes, okay? Pull out some pencils, some papers, do what you gotta do. Uh, we're about to get into some major, major meat and potatoes. <laughs> And so the main content for today, okay, so talking too much, what does it do? Okay, now a lot of folks like myself <laughs> have learn the hard way. And what we learn is that when we talk to people, we sense a bit of frustration that gets back from them. So it's never really that we might come people like myself or, you know, folks who have a very, very difficult time listening, okay, or hard time communicating, which is basically the same thing. 
when it comes to that and people who are who are talking, okay, because you can't talk and listen at the same time. So if you're not a good listener, you're most likely doing a lot of the talking. So uh, the frustration, you, you, you end up feeling this because you might come to them with an actual genuine intention to help them, but the moment that you kind of do a couple of things we're gonna share with you today, it's going to get them to be very frustrated. So frustrated. And the one thing that that does is it gets them to be focused on the frustration rather than the message that you're sending. And the one thing that we as marketers, as internet marketers, as small business owners, as affiliate, whatever it is that you are into right now, you have got to be able to get your message across. Your message, your vision, your product, your service, whatever that is, you've got to learn to communicate that to your audience or to your prospects, to your team, in a way that's going to get them motivated and active. And by you talking too much, you're not gonna, you're actually gonna drive them off, create a frustration, and they're gonna be more focused on that than your actual message. Um, yeah. And and that, that also applies to like your personal life as well, because there's been plenty of times where just, you know, from our, you know, the fact that we're engaged with each other and that we have a child, there's been plenty of times where, you know, we've, we've experienced that frustration with each other when we're attempting to talk with each other and you know the on, the only thing that's being sent out from the from the recipient is pure frustration and then of course that leads to more frustration on both parties because now both people are frustrated because you know say like he feels i'm you know i'm frustrating him because i'm not listening to him but i i'm frustrated because i feel he's not listening to me and so this how this this can affect what we're sharing with you can affect more than just your business this can affect every single aspect of your life and this is something that you know, Brandon and I work on not just with our business, but with our personal life as well. And that's something that we encourage everyone who follows us to do as well. That's right. Make sure that you're applying this to both facets of your life. And so where does persuasion begin? Persuasion begins with the ability to hear what people are saying. Okay. So now if you're trying to persuade somebody to buy your products, join your company, you know, buy into your vision, whatever it is that you're, you're attempting to do, you're attempting in essence to persuade them. You want them to come together with your point of view so that they could see the benefits of what you're providing for them. And so persuasion literally begins with the ability to listen. Okay, now if you aren't listening to what they're saying, you're not gonna be able to hear how to solve a problem that they might be having. And that's gonna distance you guys further than um, you were probably than when you even met. <laughs> and that's difficult to do, but I have done it, so it's possible. Yeah, and it's also <laughs> difficult to come back from. It is, no it is. I've, I've, I've explained this to a lot of people who I mentor that uh, I've worked with that say, that I've, I've shared with them, and I've been very transparent about this, that I have ruined plenty of relationships in my life due to the fact that I was, I was stubborn to the fact that, you know what, I'm not gonna listen to this person because either A, I know better, or two, I'm just my, I'm gonna get into that, it's, it's, just, it's just not interested. And so what does that lead to? When you, like you mentioned, in this hangout earlier, she even knows, before you even get into <laughs> anything, it's like, it stems further than your business, which is the main reason why we're here is to help you guys make more money. But hopefully by doing things outside of your business, it will naturally bring more money through your business. And that's what we're trying to you know, help you with today. Yeah, because when, I don't know if any of you guys ever watched this, uh, watched the show Restaurant Impossible um, or even uh, uh, that one with Gordon Ramsay where, you know, where they go and they make over the restaurants, they help people like rebuild their businesses and stuff. One of the key elements that's in every single episode, if you guys ever notice, is that they always tell the people who are going through a, a failing business is that if you've got crap going on outside the business, if there's something going wrong inside your personal life, Very true. it's going to affect your business. And until you get to the root of the cause or the root of the, the issue within your personal life, your business will always suffer. So a lot of what we have to share with you today, like, yes, we emphasize that, you know, this is going to help you bring in more money in your business. But it's only if you're willing to accept the fact that this works as long as both your personal and your professional lives are, you know, they're in sync with each other. If you've got issues going on in your personal life, like what we're about to share with you in just a second, then that's going to bleed, whether you want to admit it or not, over into your business and vice versa. So make sure that the advice that we share with you in today's Hangout, that you go and you leave and you take a good hard look at if any of these areas we talk about are affecting your personal life. And if so, could that be the reason why your business might not be doing as well as it should. Yeah, it might not be that you're not making, it might not be that you're talking too much. You might've been here just to hear that. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> there you go. So, <laughs> but one of the things that um, that it leads to, that talking too much can lead to guys, is a loss of not only your closest friends, who maybe you've been friends with for years, 
but it can also lead to a loss of colleagues and acquaintances, people you know inside your business sphere, as well as coworkers and employees and family members. It's very true. Yeah, we've had plenty of experience with a loss of all of these. Yeah. So and it's not like we're coming from this pedestal of perfection, like, you know, we, we don't have this issue, but we know people do. No, this is coming from people who have experienced a loss with all of those people that we mentioned and experienced the damage from both personal and professional aspects of our lives. And the most common way to not listen, because there's a million ways that you could just tune people out and not listen. And it's, for one, we all know it's a little disrespectful, but the one way, the most common way that we've noticed, and I think uh, there's been researchers out there, I don't want to claim a website or nothing, because I I just read this one book, okay? So <laughs> I'm just saying that uh, there's been other researchers out there, I know it, because he claims it, but uh, that that say that, um, that uh, oh man, that mo oh, that's what it is, that the most people, that the most um, common way to stop listening to somebody is by over talking. And I know that, even in today, me knowing that, me even being aware of that, I have come to the realization that, you know what, that is one of my areas that I've got to work on. Because when I get to a point where, say, me um, personally just now, I'm going to be transparent, and I, I know, I, hopefully this can relate to a few of you. But when I get to a point where it's, it's like a heated discussion, I tend to be that man that over talks. And that is my biggest downfall, is trying to learn or is, is, is doing what I can right now to learn how to control that. Because for one, it's going to show more respect to the people that I'm talking with, even if I don't agree with their point of view, okay? And number two, it's going to get them to be more, it's going to be, it's going to allow them to be easier to be persuaded in future instances on points of view that we do agree on. Well, what's, what's over-talking? I think because there's, there's a lot of ways that you can misinterpret the type of over-talking that we're talking about. Ha, ja, Like that. Like that. Like that. Like that. Like that. I, think, I don't get it. I think that's good. I think I think that's how they do it, you know, and, and that's pretty much how it is. It may may not it might not be that dramatic, but it really gets to a point where it feels like it could be that yeah that real, you it's know, like that person that you're speaking that you're supposed to be speaking with, right? They're supposed to be like an equal portion of the conversation being shared is always like as soon as you start talking, they start they they start their sentences, or as soon as you know you try to make a point, they jump in and make their point, and it feels as though you're just exhausted and you're like, you're tired. You're like, oh my gosh, like, I don't wanna to talk to you anymore. <laughs> you never let me say anything. Exactly, and if uh, and when most people over talk, what we've realized is that the compulsion to speak actually devalues the function of listening. So think about that. The compulsion to speak devalues the function of listening. So every time that you feel like you want to speak, you're telling your mind psychologically that I don't need, it's not important what this person is saying. I am more important than this person. That's literally what you're telling yourself. Mm -hmm. That is a that's a mind blower because so many people that are over talking, they're not selfish people. They're not. They don't even believe what they're doing is selfish. But if you actually get down to the root of it and you look at the psychological aspect of what you're doing, which is devaluing the that you're listening, and that that right there is a very sign of uh, selfishness, disrespectful, and I know that I'm very guilty of this still, but it's something that we all have to work on. And the better that we get at this, the more money that we're gonna make. And that's why this is one of the biggest things that we could share with you today is to make sure to take this information, run with it into your business as well as your relation, as your relational um, relationships. Yeah, and plus it's something important to notice that people, the people who are not being listened to, like they feel that, they know when they're not being listened to. And that's really crucial for you guys, especially if the person you're talking to is say a potential client or a potential buyer, because then all they're going to do is they're gonna turn around and they're gonna talk about how they felt as though they were ignored and that person only wanted money from them and they're never gonna go back to this person again to buy their product in the future because they're the person who doesn't listen and they just don't want to deal with it. If you're labeled as someone who doesn't listen to others, like people don't want to deal with you at all. And again, we know this from experience and it's not a fun place to be. So that's just something to, to It's true. And so yourself. ask yourself right now, I mean, just to be honest, do you like talking more or do you like listening more? I mean, just ask yourself. It's, it's not rude or wrong to say that I like talking more. All that means is that you just have to listen more. It's like an equal balance. You know, the more that you listen, the more opportunity you'll have to talk. It might not be that opportunity that you're looking for, but future opportunities will arise and you'll be able to express yourself to people who actually want to hear what you have to say. But you've got to go through that cycle of listening more. 
It's just the way that the universe works. Yeah. Um, there's and this, um, I'm sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> but there, there's no, there's this saying that one of our, uh, one of our mentors shared with us. I think it was like sometime last year, but he had this really cool phrase and it, he said, you know, we're all born with one mouth and two ears, which means we should be speaking twice as less as we are listening. So that's not good. I mean, I think it'd be pretty cool to have two mouths, but you know. Oh, I think you do sometimes. <laughs> and so why would we bring this to your attention on a hangout? Well, for a few reasons. For one, they don't teach this stuff in school. Okay, now they just don't. They they're more focused on math than they are on listening. Yeah, okay? and they, they tell you like they're always mad. They always they always get on the students like you need to listen, but they don't tell you what that means, like how to do it. So it's like no wonder kids don't listen in school because no one tells them what that means. Exactly, and it, 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 I honestly didn't know how to. I didn't know that there was an actual structure to listening. And by the end of this hangout, you will know the difference between hearing and listening, and you'll also believe that. There is a difference. There's a big difference. And you are only looking to be listened to. You only want to be listened to. I mean, people that say, I only want to be heard, well, good for you, but you're missing half your message. <laughs> Have fun with that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it, it, uh, it also, it's, a highly prized, it's, it's highly prized as a desirable interpersonal skill. So this is what's very helpful for business. And if you are unaware of what an interpersonal skill is, it's basically your relation, it's, it's the way that you look or can get in tune with with other people's emotions, the way that they move their motivations. So that's a that's a very good that's a very good trait to have in order to get in tune with those things is to be able to listen to what they're saying because they're going to tell you through not only body language but through their actual mouth exactly what it is that they're looking for, mm -hmm. and then you could provide that for them in a way that nobody else has because you are the one person, and I'm not joking about that's like one out of a hundred, if not even more than that. People who are actually listening to their audience, listening to their clients, listening to the people that are that are funding their business. You know what I mean? Like it's crazy. It, if you look at the statistics, I think that's what it was. I think it was less than five percent of the people in the book that I was reading, The Art of Persuasion. Five percent of people from their studies did um um listen. Listen, yeah. Only five? Seriously? Yeah, it's crazy. That, no, well, the clients. Less than five percent of the clients felt that they were listened to. Oh, by oh, the by that's the, terrible. Yes. Yes, that's what I mean. Oh, so, wow. And that, that's, that's, a, that's, that's nasty. A, and look at that. That's a company standard. That's an industry standard. You have people making seven figures doing that. I wow. mean, and it's like, and you wonder why so many people feel like buyer's remorse if they do buy a product or if they do buy your services later on. And it's because, you know, it's like they, they were bullied into buying your product because you, you bullied them with your talking. You talked them into buying. And now they're like, well, I only bought it. So they leave me alone. And now I don't even want it. Yeah. And, and then. And your service isn't there afterwards because there's no follow up with a lot of people who treat their business like that. They don't do any follow up because they're not willing to listen. And they know that the people, they know that if they call, if they call, if they follow back, follow up with all these things, it's going to take time out of their day. Yeah. It's just the way it is. And so with us, that's one thing that we stress to our team, stress to our people who are follow, who follow us on Twitter, wherever we're at, you know what I mean? Whatever we put out there, it's to let them know that we are readily available to help you guys get to that next level. Okay, if you're serious about making money, we're serious about helping you make money. And that's plain and simple, you know what I mean? So, Which means we will communicate with you. We will not talk to you, we will communicate with you. And this was something that I'm gonna read off the screen real quick, but it was really funny when I read this because nobody accuses you, nobody will ever accuse you of listening too much. And the example they gave was, I just couldn't stop this person, I just couldn't stop this person from listening. He made me miss my plane. <laughs> Like, and also and people in business are also drawn to good listeners, but that's, I mean, that's a good point. You're never going to miss your plane. You're never going to miss a show or because like you couldn't get somebody to stop listening. Yeah. So, I mean, just that's think about funny. that. It's awesome to, to wrap your head around these values that, that are going to help your business just generate more money doing what you're already doing. You already, you already have to talk to these people to make money, right? You already have to put yourself out there, but if you do it in this kind of manner, you will make your, your, your people will be more loyal, mm -hmm. they'll be more uh, eager to follow in, in line with your vision, and they'll just be there longer. You know what I mean? It's gonna be- As well as be more willing to hop on board with maybe participating as a team member versus just a customer. Right, that's also true. And so if you think about what's stopping most people from being good listeners? Themselves. <laughs> <laughs> themselves. And that's true, it's your ego. That's true, it's your ego. That's the number one thing that's stopping anybody from doing this. And oh yeah, because it was like you said earlier, whenever you would get in conversations with people, you would think, like I know better. I know better. I listen to this person. Who is yeah. this? And, and that's why. That's why a big reason. That this just came to mind. Just to share this with you. The big reason why we share our stories with you in the beginning of this hangout is for that exact thing right there. 
It's to let you guys know that we've come from this place. We're not, we are not the message. We're just delivering the message. Okay. That's what it is. We are not your way of, you know what I mean? We just know certain things that can help you get to where you want to go. Mm -hmm. Does that make any sense? That's I hope, an important distinction. I hope it, I hope it kind of clears things up because our ego isn't in this. We want to see you succeed and we hope that you can make more than us. That's actually our goal. Yeah. Our goal is to create a team of people who are making more than us. That's going to show, that's going to show some people some wild things. Yeah. So and that's actually, that's actually something really good to point out is, is, is what you were just talking about with the ego. Because if you build a business, if you try to share a message based off of, you know, coming from an ego standpoint, you're going to have to do like twice as much work to always maintain that because you'll have to push yourself in front of twice as many people just to just to make up for those who are not listening to you, right? And so you'll be required to do far more work because you have to speak to more people. And and not only that, but just like think about how think about how exhausting it has to be to build a business around your own ego. Like that's just Ew, that's, that's, yeah. that's just ugh. okay oh, it's, it's super, <laughs> versus yeah. like coming from a value based you know we're like brandon said like we're not the message we're just delivering the message you know when you can build a business around that standpoint then that relieves like so much pressure off your so shoulders because it's not about you it's about helping other people that's and that's why we're here that's why we hope you're here <laughs> <laughs> and so how do you become a good listener this is one of the things that uh you guys should really be taking notes on, hopefully you've been taking notes about this whole thing, but here's some major key points that you need to take away from this hangout, which is how to become a good or a successful listener. And so number one, you have to get all the distractions out of your head. Now, how do you do that? How do you do that? Well, one good way to do that is to clear your mind and focus solely on the speaker. So if, if you're not one with meditation, if you're not one with prayer, if you're not comfortable with closing your eyes, sitting still. Having that quiet time for longer than let's say 30 seconds you know what i mean like like give it a try i know a minute seems like forever but if you did it and you started to build on that i mean i'm only at a spot where i'm only doing probably five minutes ten minutes a day of, of, of solid meditation but it gets me to a point to where i know that i can get to a clear point in my mind where i'm focused on one thing and one thing only so i do appreciate the meditation and i do appreciate the the process and i've appreciated the the benefits that it's really brought me and so with you being able to clear your mind, it's, it, it allows you to focus exactly on what's being said. And in that way, there's nothing else going on around you. And uh, yeah, because most, most to feed off that point, most people, they assume, okay, if I'm looking at this person in the eyes, then I'm listening. Which me and her know is, is absolutely wrong. <laughs> people forget so many people's names when we meet them, just because of the fact that we're sitting here like trying to We've look got so hard. We've so many distractions we're just going like, on okay. around us and we're, we're, we're focusing Focus on, on keeping eyes. eye contact to show them that we're listening, that as soon as they walk away, we're like, wait, what was their name? What, oh just crap, <laughs> like what just happened? You know, and, and that happens a lot. As well as, as well as business, so be careful with that. And they have a memory bank exercise that we actually learned about a week and a half ago that uh, I'm still trying to build into habit. And, uh, you know, I'll share those. We'll share that with you if you guys really want. Um, just get a hold of us. We'll ask you about that. Or yeah, we, we might we'll, make we'll that another that hangout you. for you guys. Uh, and so listening, this is another thing that people have a mistake on. They think that uh, by not saying something, just by being quiet. I don't know why he's looking at me for that. That I'm listening. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's like, oh, I'm just not going to say anything, but I'm listening. That is. That is me. That's I'm actually. I'm and, so guilty of and that. And it's not a form of listening. <laughs> that's not. No. That's a form of hearing. Yeah, I heard what you said. But I didn't listen because listening, as we explain later, is actually a form of they explain listening and hearing as a form of uh, listening is a physiological or a, no. Yeah, physiological. And the other one is psychological. Listening is psychological. So hearing is physiological. Listening is psychological. So there's a big distinction between the two. So if you're not responding after somebody talks, <laughs> then basically there's no psychological um, connection there. So you heard the words, yes, your ears work. <laughs> that's basically <laughs> that's, plus, that's basically what the gist of it is, you yeah. know? And from, yes, yes, I, that, that is one thing that I struggle with because I'm always like, okay, well, you know, I, I am listening because I'm letting you talk. I'm letting you get every, like all of your thoughts out. I'm here, I'm listening. Yeah. And then he'll leave and I'm like, what were we just talking about? It is. Because <laughs> when you hear stuff, like he said, because you're not experiencing that psychological shift that happens when you listen, it literally, and I hate this phrase, and I know it's a strong word, but it literally goes in one ear and out the other. And my mom used to say that to us all the time growing up, like, you have to listen, stop letting things go in one ear and out the other. And of course, we had no idea what she meant, but basically, like, if 
if she had had that definition that he just gave, like we would have probably been a little bit better off because <laughs> I do like, I will be very quiet and I will listen when Brandon talks and then he leaves. And I'm like, I don't remember what we just talked about two seconds ago. It's because there was no response and I'll just leave there. I'll leave the room halfway through. And I'm sure there's people doing it right now. <laughs> I've actually begun to do it uh, with other people because when, when there's no response, when there's no communication back, whether it be on the phone, live in person or whatever, I've, I began and I started this a few years ago, probably I think, Prior on the time I met you, so it wasn't you that did this to me, luckily. But uh, no, I, I where, where you just get to where you just stop talking in the middle of a sentence. You just yeah, and you and they just go on with their business. Yeah, it's like nothing even happened. Your whole previous sentence had no. It's like you didn't say anything. You say nothing. There's been so many times where we've had people like in our own house where they will come in and they'll start like a so-called conversation and they'll ask Brandon a question and he'll respond and he'll notice that they're not listening. They'll so be he'll, playing with our daughter or something like he'll that. He'll stop talking and then t we've had a conversation where 20 minutes went by where he was totally quiet. He just stopped talking because he saw they weren't listening. And then they responded with, oh, why'd you stop talking? It's getting it gets bad. <laughs> Yeah. And like, uh, there was one thing that uh, in the sentence that he that in the book that I was reading where they say, you know what, if you're going through that, instead of doing what I did, it's good to ask a question that just blows them out of the water that makes absolutely zero sense to see what they're talking or to see if they're listening. And one of those questions that he loves to use is, I only made it a few days, I, I made it a few days, but only on food and water. And when people, when you're in the middle of talking about something, then you just cut to, oh, yeah, I only made it a few days, but it was only on food and water. <laughs> people go, uh huh, yeah, cool. Oh, that's exciting. And you're like, well, I was just talking about the Jets game. And they're like, oh, well. And you just know that they're not listening. Well, you know that, what I mean? That, I think if we were to take it like even one level deeper. Oh, I'm like, sure did you, you could. Did you notice he said, I, I, I last that I survived like only on a few days of food and water? Like most people, when they talk about surviving stuff, they're like, I, I survived like eight days on just coconut milk in the, in the Amazon or whatever it is, you know, right. there's usually no food and water involved at the same time. That's right. And so that's it's something pretty easy else. To he straight up just basically said, I live these last few days doing what I normally do, which is eating food and drinking water. And that was exactly. And that's just to test your listening skills. I mean, the first time he said that to me, I laughed. <laughs> and that's what I you get from somebody I like, who's wait. listening. I was like, wait, hold on. You just, wait, what? <laughs> that can't be right. I, I don't think you said it right. Cause you just said that what you do every day, yeah. you eat food, you drink water. And that's what you, that's what you'll get from somebody who's listening is actually a chuckle. Yeah. That's the good thing is you won't get somebody who's upset. You'll be like, you'll be like, dude, you're not going to get me with that. You know what yeah. I mean? Like <laughs> I, I get it. Okay. I'm listening. And now, now I even have, now you even have more of my attention really is how it kind of yeah. works. So it's just really, it's really cool. And so, uh, I think you should share some of the things that can can distract people like when it comes to listening like we talked about you know spending so much time focusing on eye contact to show you're listening but what are some things that can distract them the main three things that I've noticed to distract people what we've noticed is your thoughts number one now how many times have you or I have us have just been in the middle of a conversation and then something just jolts your thought and you're like oh my gosh I forgot to do the dishes <laughs> Or, oh crap, I left the coffee pot on. You know, or, oh my gosh, I forgot to be at a meeting tomorrow, or I didn't write this down, or I didn't pick this person up, or and then you start didn't make the phone trail call. Of thoughts. And exactly. And now you're lost. So this person's sitting here talking to you. You're looking right in their eyes. And they just said and sh spilt their guts out to you. Right. It could have been a totally personal story that they wanted to get off and their chest. And you are and you were lost. Talking, you were thinking about your errands for and tomorrow. Then what's the one thing that you have to say after they get finished? Nothing. Wow. You just nod, just like this. Yeah. Yeah. Or say wow, and you hope that it's a wow kind of scenario. Yeah, like you kind of play <laughs> with the tone, and you don't want it to be too excited, you don't want it to be too sad. So you're kind of like somewhere in the middle, and you hope it's just enough. Yeah, we've had plenty of that. And as so well. you don't want to be that kind of person when you're talking. It's all fun and games when you're dealing with your family and stuff like that. But when you're dealing with prospects, when you're dealing with things like that, and still with your family, you want to give them the respect to listen. I'm just saying that we can laugh about it now because we've we're around it. family. You know, <laughs> this is all family here. But it's it's just really it's really powerful to know that your thoughts can come in at any moment, but they can leave at any moment. You do not have to dwell on them. You don't have to uh, play with them. Yeah. You don't have to play with them. You could let them just go in there and go, oh, you know what? Pff, I'm not gonna deal with that right now. If you need to, carry a pen and pad around with you. So the moment that thought comes in, you write it down and you let it go. Yeah, you can even say like, you can even say something that Brandon mentioned, I don't remember exactly when, but, um, but he had mentioned a while back that 
if we're in the middle of a conversation and and he remembers something, he'll he's like more than open with being like, hey, ho- oh, I'm sorry, hold on, I need to take a second to write this down because I just remembered something really important. And he will, he'll pause the conversation, and he'll go write it down, but then he'll come back and then he'll be like, okay, so what were we just talking about? Like, let's resume. And that's something that that he advocates that you know that I do that that anyone does because ladies, <laughs> I don't know if you're aware of this, but a book that I was reading was talking about. Um, it was sharing how in a study that they were focusing on, they were comparing gray and white matter in a female brain versus a male brain to see if it's really true if women think twice as much as men. And it actually turns out that we do. Doesn't mean that twice is right. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so what they were saying, what they concluded from that study is that ladies, we are far more susceptible with falling victim to our own thoughts getting in the way of us listening because we've got our brain going twice as fast as as fast as you know our male counterparts Explains a lot, that's right, why man. we're always thinking and like why it's sometimes very difficult for a lot of us to complete one full thought or one full sentence because as we're in the middle of talking our brain kicks in and we realize something else and that leads us to something else to something else to something else and then it's just one big rabbit hole of blackness and so Something that's really powerful is maybe trying this tip that Brandon uses, which is, you know, respectfully pausing the conversation, writing down whatever was in your head, and then coming back and, you know, of course, apologizing, but being like, okay, well, you have my attention again. Let's resume. And if that, if, if you're even better, what I'm getting good with is carrying the pen and paper with me so that during the conversation, I can just bullet point out major words in the sentence because I can always relay that conversation back to me after the conversation so I'm not taking away time from people. So I've gotten better with that. And at the beginning stages of you doing this, don't feel ashamed to have to do that. Like she said, uh, it's not rude to to make sure that you get everything that you need to get so that you don't feel exhausted at the end of something and you feel like, oh, I didn't get everything that I could have from this person because I was preoccupied with my own thoughts. Mm-hmm. And the other thing are your senses. Make sure that if you got a nasty, like, could you imagine holding like a like a meeting inside a garbage truck? Like that might, that might not work out so well and not because you can have everything lined up. You make a nice table, you have best, best computer, you got everything. But the senses, your nose is like, oh, yeah. it's on fire. And how you, many, yeah, how many times, let's be honest guys, how many times have you been at your job and it's say like an important day, you've got something going on and your boss comes up and stands right next to you and is doing that whole little thing where he's like pointing over you, right? Like trying to give directions and all you see are sweat stains and all you can smell is massive body odor. Like I've-, I've It's hard to listen to what service, he's saying. In the it's service industry, it's saying. very easy to come across situations like that. And there's been plenty of times where I'll be in that situation and I'm so focused on trying not to gag <laughs> that I don't hear a word he says. I have to like turn around and be like, what, what, what just happened? <laughs> it's, it's true. <laughs> Did anyone else catch that? Because I need to know what just happened. Uh, so it is very easy to let your senses overwhelm you. And the same thing with smelling goods too, with like women who like to smell way too good, like the like the overwhelming, not even like the way too good what I'm like, what I'm not saying like- Oh, using I'm too saying much, like too of, much of a good of it, thing. Like the, too much of the good stuff, yeah, it's like, you get there and you're like, oh my god, I can't, I can't even see. Yeah. You know, you're like, it's, it's I a can mist. Taste, if it's I can cloud. taste your perfume, we've got some, we got exactly. something going and on. And I'm here. drawn away from that. I'm not going to be able to listen to everything that you have to say, and I'm going to be clouded by your message or from your message, which is going to defeat your whole purpose of being in front of me. And then you're going to have wasted time, which is going to cost you dollars, which in the long run is going to throw your business down the drain. So, yeah. I mean, these kind of things can have a ripple effect that a lot of folks in their beginning stages don't grasp. They just don't. They don't see how deep these layers go and how wide these spread if you start to build these these really great strategies and uh, principles into your life, which is don't hold don't hold any kind of meeting. Don't do anything like this. Don't try and communicate with somebody when the senses are overriding your thoughts and your whole message. OK, yeah. it's going to grow. It's going to grow shot and your emotions. Now, if you are on the phone and you're like, OK, I just got a three way call with somebody or I'm on the phone with a prospect or however you do your business. And I just got a phone call from somebody who ordered a product, whatever it is. And she's like, she answers the phone and she's like crying, you know, her eyes out, man, you know what I'm talking about here. It's just like, Hey, you know, and it's just terrible. Right. And I'm just joking. And so it just gets to a point where you're going to, you're going to say, you know what, I'm sorry that you're going through this, but you know what, is there any way that we can pick up this phone call on another time? I, and if she, and if there's any resistance on it, no, I'm good. No, I can handle this. No, it's, it's works for me. No, I don't, you know, you can resist and you can say, you know what? I don't feel like you're in the correct spot right now to hear this information. I would love for you to be in the right state of mind so that we can move forward efficiently. 
I love, I love for you to have a great day. I hope everything works out. I'll talk to you tomorrow. It's nine o'clock. You know what I mean? Like you want to be able to be respectful, but still know that if they're in a point of hardship or in a point of like in the middle of a party, like super happy and they, they just can't even, you know, Hey bro, what's going on? Got everything going on around them. They're not going to be able to hear your message and you don't want to deal with that. Mm -mm. You know what I mean? And so when you ask somebody like us right now, we, we hope that everybody watching this is taking this serious enough to put your kids down, to be able to, you know, turn off the TV, to, to make sure that, to make that those things aren't, aren't on right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause it's going to be really helpful for your business to take in this information, not only from us, but taking these strategies that we're sharing with you from anybody that you're learning out there from the online world or from a book or wherever to make sure that you're focused and to make sure that you're listening as a great listener should. Yeah, and it's really easy when it comes to your emotions, guys, <laughs> <laughs> with your anger, right? Because we've all had conversations where we get on the phone with a client or a customer or even a team member. Oh yeah, and they're just and up. and they are, you know, the conversation starts out nice, everyone's on the same page, and then somehow it takes a turn, and then it just gets to the point where you feel your blood boiling. This is where it's, I, in my personal opinion, it's most difficult for you to really tap into this. It's still, it's still totally doable. You can still totally tap into what we're sharing with you. It's just, I find with anger, it's much more difficult because of the way that you feel all of that so physically that, you know, most oftentimes you react in a very negative way. And anger and disrespect are two different things. If yeah. you're being disrespected, we're not encouraging you to move forward with that. No, not at all. But if if it's getting to the point where say like they're where they're just unnecessarily, you know, talking trash or trying to demean your character or your business, or, your product, or right. they're just, you know, getting really personal with maybe some attacks that they're doing because maybe your they're business is helping them wanted. make money. Yeah. Right. And and they're and they're not getting those results, but it's because they're not following the strategies and principles you tell them, right? So it's on their own faults that they're not making that money. And if you try to relay that to them, a lot of times, most people get very angry and then they get really personal when they get angry. So and that's a time where you want to what? Cut off the conversation. Yes. So you're just going to tell them the same before, thing that we tell the Yes. It's before just, you start feeling that blood boil, let them know. Or when you start feeling it happening, just be like, you know what? I feel like this is a conversation that needs to be held when we have cooler heads. I'm going to hang up the phone right now and we can resume this call when we're both Calmer. Yeah, and if, if no one respects that, then that's tough titty, said the kitty, because you just got to hang up. There's a button <laughs> yeah. now. So it's just the way it is. But uh, it's not wrong to ask somebody to give you full focus. It's not wrong to do that, like how we just did and how we do in the beginning to say, you know what, this is what we need from you. We need you to turn off the TVs. We need you to, uh, like like I was just mentioning, the away. distractions. There's so many other distractions than just those three. I just mentioned that those were the biggest three. Those were yeah. the main three. So we also have TVs, newspapers, because visuals. A lot of people who will say to you, okay, well, um, I could listen while you, I could, I could listen while I'm watching TV. Just talk to me. I could listen. Yeah. And they might even actually be looking at you. There's plenty of times where Brian and I have had those conversations where like I'll be in the middle of the show and he'll come and he'll start talking to me and he'll be like, you know, our, even with uh, the sound off, yeah, even with the sound off, but just the fact that in our peripherals, we have all of that going on and it's major distraction. Truth be told, like I'm focusing on my vampire diaries. <laughs> oh, little ponies or something, you know what I mean, from our daughter. It's 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 wild how yeah. we could be in full focus for something, see something just pop up and go, huh? And we're and then we're done. We're and, totally done. And we want to be, I mean, we've always been, you know, the kind of people who want to see success and do these things and learn from stuff. And so we know these 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 strategies and these tips, and we still fall victim to them too. So it's not like we're living this perfect life yeah. telling you that this is what needs to be done so that you can be perfect too. And what we're sharing with you is that this is a constant and never ending battle, but to know where to work on your, to know where to work is going to be monumental to your business and growth, or to your growth and business. And it's also going to help you separate yourself from everybody else within your specific company or business or brand or whatever the case is, because then you'll be the person that people look at compared to everybody else and they're like, oh, I, I, I like going to this person because they listen to me. Whatever I have, they listen to me. So if there's an issue with their product, I can come to them, they'll listen. If there's an issue I have with a strategy to implement, they'll listen versus the guy next to you who's like, all he does is talk to me, he talks at me, he talks down to me, and all he's telling me is to just buy more stuff and he's ignoring me. Like, if you were to put those two types of people together, sure, can the, the latter person make sales? Yes, but they won't be long-term sales. They'll be just short-term sales. We're helping you put stuff in front of you so that you can create long-term sales. That's right. Which is better. 
And we are about, we're, 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 we're like three quarters of the way done, folks. I know it's about 20 minutes over and we, um, <laughs> we do this all the time. And we're sorry for that, but we love that you guys are sticking with us and that we hope you guys are finding massive value in this. Uh, but listening is truly a skill. Listening is truly a skill. It's not something that you could just kind of, it's not a talent. It's not, you're just, you're not just like born with being a good listener. No one is born with being okay? a good listener. Okay, you've got to build this into your into your values. You gotta build this into your habits, into your daily routines. You gotta figure out new ways and, and, and tactics that work for you and your personality. Um, and the reason why it's a skill is because we think faster than other people speak. Okay, she was ladies. mentioning before that, yeah, ladies are about two or three <laughs> times probably faster than this. But I, I'm not sure if this is an actual average for uh, all genders or if this is just an average of men. But uh, it, it's what they say is the average person um, talks between 120 and 150 words per minute. And the think rate is between 600 and 800 words per minute. Okay, so just imagine what I said earlier. If 600 and 800 words per minute is how fast a man thinks, ladies, double that for you. You know we've got some work to do. <laughs> I mean, that means that your thoughts are literally ro ro uh, roaming around three times faster than anything that I could speak about. So there's nothing I could say that could keep you to calm your calm your senses or calm your thoughts. The only thing that you, that can be done is you to take control of your mind. And by you clearing your mind, gaining focus, like I mentioned earlier, and clearing out all that junk inside your head. Okay. And so uh, the listener is always going to be a talk uh, ahead of the talker. Like we mentioned, he's always going to be ahead of the talker. Um, so... And the way you listen is paramount to moving any relationship forward. Yeah. Okay. And the biggest thing that we mentioned yesterday or that I mentioned yesterday on the hangout was uh, empathy. Okay. Now this is something that I've learned to work with because uh, it's just, it, it's difficult for my kind of personality and where I come from in my past, it was difficult for me to, to show that without showing weakness, you know, like typically empathy for me, where I come from, would get you beat up. <laughs> yeah. You know what and I mean? If, and if you guys, if you guys don't understand, cause we hear a lot about sympathy. So we know what that is, but for those of you who are on here who who don't really grasp what being empathetic means, it just simply means being able to put yourself in a full understanding. You may not have had to go through what they're going through, but you can put yourself in a place of Correct. full understanding of exactly where they're at emotionally, physically, psychologically, and in doing that, you build a connection, you build trust with them because you're being empathetic with their situation without having gone through it yourself. Exactly. And if you remember the formula from yesterday, that's a huge part in your success in business. Yeah. And so um, how to move forward and use this in your business. Now we get to the goods, right? Now you guys are like, oh my goodness, we finally got <laughs> to all this stuff. Oh man. Well, now it is the goods. How do we apply this for the business? All the other stuff you can apply for your business in a way that will make you more money, but it's that was more mindset. That was more, okay, well, you know what? Let's get you working on a way that can, can get you understand why this is important. Okay, now you get to use that information. Okay, so what not to do when you're engaging in conversation with the buyer or prospect? You don't interrupt. It's so tempting. Oh, trust me, it's so tempting, but don't do it. Do not interrupt. Do you it. will see your conversions go down the toilet yes. when you do this. And this actually, luckily for us, we didn't really have too much of this problem because our conversions stunk in the beginning as it was. So we weren't really losing anything more than we could have. <laughs> But uh, it's still true to case, okay? Yeah. So you want to be able to make sure that, because uh, I know that for a fact, if we started doing that now in our business, we wouldn't be, we would see in, a decrease in things if we started to just interrupt everybody that was talking and started to just cut people off and, you know, didn't give people a chance to speak and things like that. We would definitely see a decrease. Yeah. Uh, and so don't finish somebody else's sentences, which is something that I do still, uh, especially with her, because I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm smarter. You know, if I can, she, I feel like she's smarter than me, but I feel like <laughs> if I can end up getting... That if sentence, I can predict what she's about to say. Then that makes me smarter, right? And I know that's probably that has to be what some of you guys out there feel too. That has to be. Don't make me feel well, and alone. The, and the thing about that is most people, they really genuinely do not finish your sentences because they're trying to be like Brandon and show about you. No, they're show about myself. It was, the, it was to make myself feel better. What they're doing is they feel they feel like they're on the same page with you. And they're, they're most nine times out of ten, they're really just coming from a place of genuine excitement that they know what you're talking about. So most people will finish your sentence, not because they're trying to be rude, but because they're they're generally trying to show you that they understand what you're talking about. Well, and then the big problem with this as well, I think a big problem that is you actually put people, you actually put thoughts in people's heads. Yeah. No, that's so true. if you were to say, hear from a prospect who's saying, uh, you know, I, I, I think I can come up with the money, but, and you go, what, you just can't uh, work more hours at your job? Or you don't have a wife to go and do this too. And, yeah. <laughs> you know, and she's like, they're like, 
wow, no, like I just, I, I, I just couldn't do anything. You know what I mean? Like it's, yeah. you're just putting these thoughts into their head that are creating more reasons for them to, to doubt themselves, to doubt themselves doubt their and to stop to them from taking action. To do. So it, for one, it's very disrespectful. And two, you're providing them with more reasons not to join you or your company or your business. Yes. And Hence that just, whole talk yourself out of a sale thing. I mentioned earlier. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I was, was going to say, um, another one is just don't talk over. Right, which is what we both didn't want to do right there. If you <laughs> just, saw that. Just kind of, <laughs> and there's there and because we've we've been open to accepting the fact that Brain and I are terrible listeners, right? <laughs> and we're working on it. One of the things that we did for a long time in the beginning of our relationship, like not even taking the business part out of it, was was we would always especially if we got in a conversation where we both knew the subject, like we knew it very well and we were very passionate about the subject. We would always like Brandon would say something and be like, oh, da, da, da. and then he'd go, oh, da, da, da. and then, at, you know, it's just a constant like one up on the pitch. <laughs> and it was, yeah, it was our yeah. conversations like usually went nowhere. And so another thing that was my problem at the beginning, and these are all things that we're comfortable sharing with you now because we have overcame a lot of these, a lot of these. And it's helped our business grow so much, so much. And so one of the things that we wanted to offer was don't offer or say right now is don't offer advice too soon. Um, it cuts people off and there's no room for further inquiry. So the, basically what you're saying is if you cut somebody, if you, if you offer the advice too soon, if somebody comes to you and says, I'm looking to make me go, okay, well I could give you this. And then you send them a link. Okay. You're cutting them off. You're giving advice too soon because mm -hmm. the further inquiry would be, okay, well, why would you need this money? Mm -hmm. What why? could you do this money that could, what would this money do for you that you don't or can't do right now? Mm -hmm. You know, these are all questions that you would need to ask if you were listening and you were trying to give them the best service or possible, uh, you know, anything provided. Mm -hmm. That's the way that you attack this. You don't just do it in a very superficial way. You end up getting into them and you say, you know what, I don't, I don't want to give you my advice right now. I want to actually see what your whole problem is because right now hearing what I'm hearing, it, it, it's this. But if you tell me something else, it could be this. Mm -hmm. So I need to hear your whole thing so that we can know where you're exactly at because I can't take you where you want to go until I know where you actually are. And most times, that's really important because most times a lot of your prospects will come to you and a lot of your potential clients and customers and they will assume that their issue is X, Y, or Z. But then if you were to take that moment to uh, to walk them down that road of finding out what's really going on and what's really their struggle that's causing them to, to not live the life they want for themselves. Most times you'll find that what they think is their challenge is not their challenge at all. It's actually two or three levels deeper than that. There's something that's even, you know, a more stronger route that needs to be weeded out to yeah. help them achieve their success. And something that we've learned from, from our mentors is the fact that once you find out that information, you still can't just be like, boom, here you're ready. Here's my link. <laughs> Here's my product. This is where you offer your advice. You ask them, okay, well, you've just explained to me this. I have advice that I would like to share with you. Would you like to hear it? Because even if you're at that point where the person has expelled all of their stuff to you, most times we'll just be like, okay, cool. So you're done talking. Here's my advice. And the person who came to you is still not going to listen to you because even though they're getting the advice they wanted, they're still not being, they're still not, it's still not being put in front of them in a digestible way because most people don't like being told what to do. But if you ask them for permission to tell them what they're asking for, they'll be far more susceptible and receptive to what you're sharing after you ask that question. It's very true. I actually, yeah, we have a very high conversion rate when it comes to getting people to, uh, you know, whether it be opt into our list or to get information to them that we feel is going to be beneficial for them. The moment that we ask them, are you open to hearing more? It's, it's, it's actually, it's astounding <laughs> how high that, that percentage is when you, when you come from that place of mm -hmm. generosity and you, it, for some reason, people feel like they're almost obligated to, cause they're like, wow, you know what? He asked me, mm -hmm. I don't get asked too many things. And this is true. A lot of people don't get asked too many things every day. Um, they kind of get walked over and you use as doormats and they don't, Kind of, they just kind of mix in with the crowd and things like that. So when you could take time to separate yourself and ask them specific questions that are going to be tailored to their needs, you're going to stand out and you're going to make a lot more money in this business. Mm -hmm. And so now that you know the four things not to do, what <laughs> are the two, what are the three things that we can do to get you uh, communicating or to get you listening better? 
And so when you're in a conversation with a customer prospect, family, friend, member, whatever it may be, you want to paraphrase. This is something that she's extremely good at. Did you want to, I don't know why you're good at that. Maybe you have either. a bigger tip or something, but she is extremely good with that. She Honestly, can take, um, I don't, I don't think I've, to, now that I'm put on the spot, like, I don't think I've ever really <laughs> thought about the fact that I'm like a good paraphraser. I think it's just been the fact that I come from an incredibly large family and I'm always around, you know, fast paced conversations. So it's really important that, you know, we just learn to condense the conversation into paraphrasing so that we can move forward so we can get back to whatever it is that, you know, that we're doing. And I, I honestly, I think that's just really where it comes from. I didn't realize that it was a skill, but since we've learned what we're learning, like, hey, I can do that. And paraphrasing actually does uh, two things. It shows that you understand to the other person. Okay, it shows the other person that you understand. And it, uh, it shows that it, it's you showing yourself that you can relay the exact message that they have just said to you, but in your own words. That's gonna provide clarity to not only you, but to the other person. It's gonna allow a sense of kind of like a relief to say, okay, well, my message has been conveyed. Now, whether or not they run with it, whether or not they find value in it, whether or not they wanna do anything that I'm asking them to do, that does not matter now. The matters is I've communicated effectively and they understand my message. Mm -hmm. Now, just let God take its course. You know, that's just gonna, whatever happens, happens. Yeah. Okay, you've done everything that you could do. Follow up is great. You're gonna to continue to be in front of them. But as long as you come from that place of, being able to paraphrase what they're saying. Cause like a lot of people who are in talk talks with their clients and with their um, team members and things like that, who are going through these problems or hearing these aspirations and things like that, they have a very difficult time paraphrasing this. And the person, I'm gonna be honest They'll with you folks. That's what I was don't. about to say. Yeah, that's the last <laughs> thing that you wanna do is when I'm on the phone with you and I'm sharing with you my dreams and my goals and where I wanna be in the next 90 days, the last thing I want to do is for you to go, okay, so you want to be here, here, and here. And I'm like, well, yeah, that's exactly what I said. I mean, you're not going to, you're not even going to take that around and make it your own. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I want to know that you understand me in your verbiage, in your language, because then we can move my dream maybe to another spot, maybe a little bit bigger, you know, because if not, it's just me working on it. Why do I need you here? You know what I mean? So uh, just take that in for what it is. Uh, and then use empathetic questioning. We said empathy, empathy, empathy. It's empathetic listening. It's empathetic questioning. Empathy, empathy, empathy in this business is going to get you paid. And mm -hmm. it's just going to be something that is not being taught right now. Um, in the industry right now, we've actually joined a movement. We are co-founding members, okay, of an epic story uh, academy that is changing the way that the industry does business, okay? And we're just proud to say that because empathy is a big part of that. Yeah. It, it's, it's not about agitation. It's about aspiration. It's yeah. about getting people to be where they want to, getting people to go where they want to go through encouraging words, not fear mongering tactics. Or pouring, that, pouring salt on the wound. Right? You know, we don't want to do that. And empathy is a big part of that. So you want to use empathetic questioning. And this gets you to dig deep and it gets you to look like a mind reader because when you do this, uh, people are going to look at you and go, wow, that's exactly what I was thinking. And you're going to go, oh, cool. So we can relate. Once you can relate to your person on another level, they're going to be more open to buying from you on a regular basis. Yeah. Well, and it feels like you solidified that relationship of knowing each other like five times faster. Because if you can do this with a person who maybe you just met, this is like your first phone conversation. And within the first 15 minutes, you can establish that sense of, well, I feel like I really know this person. So I feel comfortable moving forward. Like you've already put yourself one step ahead of most other people. That's it. And so listen for listening for deep. That's the other thing. Okay. So the third thing is to listen for deep meanings in communication. Now there's a lot of people right now who have a very good receiving set. Okay. Their broadcasting set, their talking set isn't very good, but the receiving set is very well. And this is going to help you out because it's going to get you to receive communication on a deeper level. You're going to be able to tap into people's core motivations per se. Okay. Uh, a lot faster than somebody else who is a more of a talker. Mm -hmm. So just be aware that if you already have that keen sense of listening, you're already one step ahead of the game. You're, you're like ahead of the curve by a long shot because there's so many people right now in the business that are not taking that step to do that. So by you already having that awareness, do you see what I'm saying? It's, it's the way it's, it's no other thing that you can be done. And you know, well, plus I was just going to, I was just going to yeah, a little thing about that is the fact that if you can, if you can do that, one thing that you can also uh, be very receptive with when you're communicating with other people like this is you can pick up on the, what one of our other friends calls the energy behind the words, because how many times uh. do we have conversations with people and we're like, well, they said this, right? But then when we're thinking about it, we're like, oh, 
like that's not really what they meant at all like what they were they said this but if you play back the way they said it the energy they put out to it like the tone of voice they used you'd know very quickly that it they was, were screaming at you yeah. like i need help or this is really bothering me and what i want you to do is just show me that you see that you know because most people if you ask them how they are they're gonna be like oh i'm fine well how are you doing in your business yeah. oh i'm fine but if you're listening if you're being receptive like he was talking about then you'll be able to pick up on those subtleties where if you ask that question those you can pick up questions. yeah you can pick up on the fact that you know you can be like well i you know you're saying that you're doing really well but i i'm i'm feeling this from you when you say that you know why why do you why do you think that is yeah, what's going or, on what can we talk about you yeah, know we're asking you know just empathetic questions like you know what hey i I've, I've, uh, I've been going through this in my business are you seeing what kind of results are you seeing you know, like these are empathetic questions. These are questions that are going to get people to think about, uh, okay, where have I been? What do I want to do? Where do I want to go? You know, and that's why when you get them to open up like that, it creates a bond that is really hard to be broken. Um, and that's what will keep us uh, in business for ourselves and what will keep you in business for yourself and what will keep your team in business for themselves. Long term sustainability. For long term, exactly. Is that loyalty, it's that trust, it's that fact that, you know, when people come to you, they know that you're going to listen, like you mentioned. And they know that not only are you going to listen, but you're going to do your best to provide a solution to their problem. Um, and that's why people join teams. That's why people uh, take advantage of opportunities. That's why people do things that are going to better their life. And so that's why we cannot overemphasize, overemphasize <laughs> the importance of learning. Of listening. <laughs> listening. Sorry, listening, listening. Of listening. Learning is, I can't emphasize, overemphasize the importance of learning either, just to be safe. That's a whole other hangout. But yeah, yeah I can't so. say overemphasize <laughs> at all. <laughs> Get some more. Yeah, there we go. Maybe some water. Well, yeah. So tell them what, what what did you learn today? Well, what did all of you folks learn? If you guys were listening, <laughs> that's fun, right? Then you learned why talking so too much <laughs> is is costing you, right? Time, money, people, right? Three very important factors. We also learned how to become a better listener. Things that you can take today, as soon as we're done, and start applying to both your professional and personal lives that can help you become a better skilled listener to regain that time, regain that money, regain <clears throat> those friendships or those relationships you may have yeah. been losing right now, as well as how you can take what we've shared with you, how you can take this new skill set and then apply it to your marketplace. So you can expand your business, which is our overall goal here is to help you expand. Help you make more money. Yes. That's what we want for you guys. And like we said, we always share this with you with those folks who, who come on these hangouts and, there's, there's so much more that we go into depth with with our team, and we're going to give you an opportunity right now to join that team. And it's really to work directly with us so that we can help you in whatever company that you're in. Honestly, if you're not getting the leads that you want to for your company, if you're not seeing the results that you want to see, there's probably a reason behind it. And I'm not saying that you have any lack of. What I'm saying is that it, maybe it's just the, the people that are around you, the teachings that you're learning, the, the process that you're doing it. Maybe there's just one thing that you need to hear. Mm -hmm. maybe, it's, maybe it's a ton of things. You know, I'm not sure where you're at in your business. We, we're we not sure where you're at right now. Yeah. We'll never know that until we communicate. But then what, exactly. But once you once you end up taking action, you end up saying, you know what, today's, today's hangout was pretty awesome. A ton of value. And I see that these guys show up every day for, for us. Today's week. <laughs> yeah, for us. You know I mean? That's really why we're here is to help new entrepreneurs, people in their business who aren't seeing results, whether you're new or not, to get those results. Because we were, we were new basically until about three months ago, okay? We were in the Pretty business much. for about 18 months, but honestly, we didn't take it serious until the past probably 90 days. And in those last 90 days, we've seen more results than we have ever seen ever. 18 months. And before, Five. you know what I mean? It's crazy. And so that's why we decided to take action now, start doing these hangouts for you folks that, that we believe is going to help you whether you want to run with us or not. And that's why we're dedicated to providing you with this value every day. Because it's not, it doesn't mean to us. We're not caring about your twenty-five dollars. We don't care about this. We care about you seeing success, whether that's with or without us. And that's the big reason why we're here today. So as you look over, I'm not sure if she just made it, it visible or not. It should be over. Uh, if you're it's watching this be, on Google Plus, it should be over to the left of your screen. If you're watching this on our Facebook fan page, then it should be on the bottom of the page. You should see a green button that says "Work Directly with Us." Yeah, and you just have to press that if you found any value in today's message and you feel like you really want to take your business to that next level. We have some things right now that we're going to give away to you folks who decide to take action right now. Now, 
what are we gonna do you want to go through that i mean <laughs> yeah, I, I, I love it we have we have four things right now that we're also going to give away to you folks so make sure to pull out and get ready because this is going to be an amazing yeah, opportunity of, for you folks to take your business to that next level yeah one of the one of the benefits that we share with people who you know are fast action takers and see the value in what we're about to offer is the fact that we give you guys a one-on-one -on -one coaching call so about 15 to 30 minutes two on one because there's two yeah, ones. That, yeah, that's true. That might be better. Two yeah, on, let's call it two, we'll two, 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 on two and one. <laughs> <laughs> we have to work on the verbiage. <laughs> but um, usually we give this call, we charge about $197 for this call for just 15 to 30 minutes of our time. That's usually what we charge most of our clients. We have a lot of value that we give to you guys in a big yes, game plan. Because yeah. what we'll do is in this 30, 15 to 30 minute coaching call, is Answer we'll do exactly questions. what we've been talking about today. We will help dig deep. We'll discover, you know, what it is you need help with, why you need help with, you know, achieving those results that you're not achieving right now, where it is you really want to go and why, and then help you develop a game plan, right? Your next 90 day game plan, step by step, step by step to help position you to the results that you're looking to have for yourself that maybe you're not getting right now. But we'll also invite you. And this is again only for the people who take action and click the button either to the side or the bottom of your screen we also invite you to our private mastermind now we don't allow everyone to come here we don't even allow every single one of our team members to that's come right here. you this have to actually be very select master you have to be positioned in a certain place you have to be positioned in, in a yes, way that you yeah. have to show that not only are you willing to commit to our strategies and principles and the things that we share with you Right. But you also have to show that you're committed to moving numbers in your business, because if you're if you're not willing to commit to moving numbers, once we give you the information on how to do it, then there's no there, there's no reason for us to invite you into a group of serious masterminding entrepreneurs who are attempting to help each other build their businesses, because only only people who understand the value in this private mastermind are allowed in. That's right. And, and I mean, that's nothing against anybody else who doesn't make it in. It's just the fact that there's certain people who, when you go to any kind of Costco, any kind of club, there's always a VIP. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Those are for the serious buyers. You know what I mean? And, Those are for the serious. Yeah. And you may not, you may not be ready. Members, serious business leaders. Yeah. You may not be ready in your business right now to join a private mastermind. But the good news is if you keep coming back six days a week while we're here and we're sharing all the free value that we share with you, you do still have an opportunity to put yourself in that position to be ready, which is another reason why we give these free hangouts now. And then of course, you're gonna get tons of support from not only us, you're also gonna get tons of support from our team, you're gonna get tons of support from our actual support staff that we have on, you know, on our side. Yeah. So you're not going through this journey alone. Even if you're building a business outside of our specific opportunity, you still get access to the support, the encouragement, the the accountability yeah. you still get all of that because again our goal is to help you move numbers in your business yeah we make ourselves readily available for all you folks so that uh you know shoot us an email um you know subscribe Facebook. to the channel whatever it is that you got to find us on whatever it is we make ourselves readily available for that reason exactly that, that we want to see you succeed and so for those who have made the decision, actually, and we'll get notification of that, mm -hmm. for those of you who have made the decision right now to go ahead and join with us, we're gonna go ahead and be holding a private hangout for you guys that is specifically for you folks who decided to take action. And now this is something that is beyond, you can add that to those things that we just gave you, okay? <laughs> So all those things that we just gave you, okay, so it's not gonna be the 197 for the call, it's not gonna be everything else added up, it's not even gonna be $99 today, okay? It's $25 to get started with us working directly so that you could share with, in, in this with us these strategies, these tips, these things are gonna help you get to that next level. And the other reason why we ask this to people, honestly, is to, is to let us know that you're serious about making money. Mm -hmm. We call okay? this a micro commitment. So there's nothing really big about this. It's just to show us that you are ready to take this, really this vision forward and to run with us so that we can help you make some more money in this new year. And yeah. so- And you're willing to take what we share with you seriously. Yeah, yeah. and it's gonna happen immediately, That or the hangout's gonna happen immediately, right after this hangout right here, we're gonna get in contact with everybody who decided to make that powerful decision. So uh, for everybody else, we will see you guys back here tomorrow at 3, 3 p.m. Uh, we love you guys for sticking out for this, uh, for this long time. <laughs> Sorry, I know it took a- way longer than normal. But we had some fun, shared some massive value, and uh, we love you guys. See, see you guys tomorrow. tomorrow.